Namaste and welcome back to the class. My friends, we were discussing the different kinds of operations one can be doing on arrays and let me introduce you to another operation which you will be frequently using which is to remove duplicates from a sorted array. So I want to remove duplicates from a sorted array. What do I mean by this? Assume this is the array that I have with me. Clearly you can notice that duplicates are there. Also you can notice that it is sorted. Now the question is asking you to remove the duplicates from the sorted array. Now how would you go about doing it? Simple. If you look at it very carefully, you will notice that if I remove duplicates, I'm just creating one more array here for you. I'm just creating one more array for you. Here if you notice that obviously there are two two, so I'll remove the duplicates. One two will be stored. Two three, so one three I will store. And then there's only one four as it is as stored. Two sixes are there, so I will store it. So if you notice, after removing duplicates, it will become 2, 3, 4 and 6. Any confusion till this point of time? So this is how it works, right? So this is what the question is asking you to do. Now, how will you approach this? Well, it's very simple. Let's dive into the algorithm. Now, what I am saying is that, what if we do like this? This is the array given to us. What I will do is, whatever is the size of the given array, I will create another array of the same size and I will keep it. So here the size is 7, 7 size another array I will create it and I will call it as temp. I operate everything. So ultimately temp is going to have all the unique elements within AR or it is going to have all the duplicates removed means what will be remaining is unique elements. I operate everything. That is what will be there inside temp. Now, how are we uh, going to approach this? Well, I would say, first and foremost, whatever is the first element in my array, that as it is, I will store it inside 10. See, as it is, I will store it inside 10. Why, if you ask me, obviously, the first element, you have to store it because, you know, when you are looking at the first element, there is no concept of duplicates. That is the first element. Duplicates will be after the first element. So, whatever is the first element, as it is, I will store it. Uh, then what will you do? You may ask. Now what I will do is, I am going to appoint two people to help me in this venture. The first person is going to be I and I will place I at the first element, at the second element or at the first index in my original array. I am going to appoint another person to, you know, help me remove duplicates from this array and store it here and I will call that person as RD or remove duplicates and rd is going to be at the beginning of the secondary it's going to be at the beginning of the secondary now how will i and rd help me achieve this you ask me logic is simple guys okay now i will check if in case the ith element the ith element is not equal to the rd element what does this mean what is the ith element 2 what is the rd element 2 now tell me, are they equal or not equal? They are equal. Equal means that this is a duplicate. If it is a duplicate, should I place it here? No, because that element is already there. If it was not there, if it was not equal, then only I should store. How are you able to think? So I will keep going through this array and RD will help me check if the element that I is pointing to, is it already present or not? How are you able to think? So obviously, this is equal. If it is equal, I should not store. If, it, if I should not store, what I will do is I will not touch RD. I will take I and I will move forward. Next, I will check. Is the ith element equal to the RD element? No, it is not equal. See, it is not equal. And that is what I want. If it is not equal, it means that it is not there in this temporary. If it is not there in the temporary, then I must store it here in this position. Now, the position where I should store it, that is what RD will help. So the moment I find an element which is not equal to the RD element, first thing I will do is I will increment RD or I will move it forward. And then AR of I, I will store it in temp of RD. AR of I, if I store it in temp of RD, as you guys clearly know, what is going to happen is like this 3 will come and get stored here. Any confusion? After which, after which I am within a loop, I moves forward. Next, I will check, is the ith element not equal to the temp of rd? I will check. 3 is equal to 3, which means 3 is already there here. I want only unique elements to come, which means I will not store. 
to not if not so means don't do anything just move i forward so i moves forward again i will check is the ith element equal to the rd element or oh, it is not equal if it is not equal yes i know that i should be storing it so what will you do you have to store it in this position rd is in this position so the moment you find not equal condition true move rd forward so if i move rd forward rd comes in front then this ith element i will store it at rd which means like this 4 comes and gets stored after which again i am within a loop move i forward check if in case this ar of i is it not equal to temp of rd is it not equal yes not equal means it is the first time that we are encountering it so you have to store it to store it first move rd forward then the ith element store it at the rd position so 6 gets stored you are within a loop obviously i moves forward and then check if in case the ith element is not equal to the element at rd no it is equal if it is equal it's a duplicate duplicate means don't store it don't do anything you are within a loop i moves forward and clearly you can notice you went out of the boundary of the first array which means successfully the second array will only and only have the unique elements from the first array or the duplicates have been removed two three four six are you able to think so this is one way to approach it. Now if I have to write code, what did we do? First and foremost, first element in AR, store it as it is inside temp. So see, AR of 0, store it inside temp of RD. Because RD is the pointer in the second array. Then run a loop from the second element till the last. So for i beginning from 1 to length of AR. To length of AR. Now we're able to think. What should we do? Come inside and check if in case the element that i is pointing to is it not equal to the element rd is at that is what you should check or if it is not equal only you should store isn't it so see if in case temp of rd is not equal to ar of i then you must store it inside temp so to store it inside temp first you should move rd forward rd plus plus then ar of i i will store it inside temp of rd that's it that's it 100% this will work, but as a person who is learning DSA, your brain should always think whether this is the most optimal solution or not. And I would say 100% this is not optimal because I can't reduce the time complexity here. Please understand, it is going to be big O of n only because you have to ultimately traverse to the end of the first array. But if you look at it, in order to remove duplicates here, I'm creating a new array of the same size, which means extra space is being allocated, which means space complexity is going to increase. Auxiliary space. Auxiliary space means what? Temporary space. New space you're making use of. Yes. Now my approach here is, can I avoid using this temp array completely? Can I avoid it? Sir, how will you do that, sir? You may ask. Now watch it. What I will do is, I am going to completely remove this temporary. I have removed it. What I will do is, I anyways will come here. If temporary is not there, then this line is also not needed for me. I am going to use the same array. So see what I will do. I will begin from 1, go till the end of my array. What I will do is, RD, which was in the second array, I will initialize it to the first array only. RD will begin from 0. Now see what I will do. Very simple, same logic. I will see if in case the ith element or the ith element is it not equal to RD. Same condition is here instead of temp, instead of temp, I will make this as AR. I will make it as AR itself. Okay, sir, what will you do? Watch it carefully. I will check if in case AR of RD. Is it not equal to AR of I? Is it not equal to AR of I? If it is not equal to AR of I, then I will do all this, but it is equal. If it is equal, I will not do anything. Instead, what I will do is, I will just move I forward. I will move I forward. Great, sir, you moved I forward. Now what will you do, sir? Again, I will check if in case AR of RD, is it not equal to AR of I? Yes, it is not equal. If it is not equal, this is a unique element, not a duplicate. If so, tell me, would you agree if I take this element and replace this, 
my thing is solved. If I can replace, bring this three here, matter is solved. So what will you do, sir? What I will do is the moment the condition satisfy, R D plus plus. So see, R D comes in front. R D came here. Now this element you want to assign it here. So what should you write? A R of I assign it to A R of R D. So here instead of ten, would you agree? I can just tell A R itself. And if I assign A R of I to R D, then this 2 is going to get replaced by 3. 3 is going to be there already. How are you able to think? Yes, sir. We understood. What else? You are within a loop. Move I forward. Again, check if in case this Rd element, is it not equal to the element at the ith position? No, they are equal. If they are equal, it is a duplicate. Don't do anything. You are within a loop. Move I forward. Check. Is RD and I not equal to each other? Yes, they are not equal. Which means this is a unique element. If this is a unique element, if I take this and store it here, it will be really good. I hope you are able to think. If I take this and store it here, it will be really good. And that is what it'll, the code is doing. If in case it is not equal, RD plus plus, RD comes in front. Then take the ith element, give it to RD. Which means AR of I, assign it to AR of RD. Which means this 3 is going to get replaced by Four. Are you seeing? You are within a loop. Move I forward. Move I forward. See, if in case R D element and Ith element are they not equal? Or not equal means unique. Unique means store it here. To store it here, first thing move R D forward, and after that, whatever is there in the Ith position, assign it to R D, which means that gets replaced. Six comes. You are within a loop. Move I forward. See if in case these two elements are not equal to each other. They are equal. Equal means it's duplicate. Don't do anything. You are within a loop. Move I forward. You go outside the boundary. Okay, sir. But where have you removed duplicates? You may ask. Still duplicates are there. Correct. But look at this. Look at where RD is at the third index. If the same array, I accessed it from first index till last index, I will get duplicates. 100%. But this array, if I access it from the 0th index till the RD index, will I get duplicates or will I get unique elements? You have got unique elements. Just look till here, unique elements only. So in other words, have you not successfully removed duplicates till RD? And all duplicates, have you not pushed it to the end of the array? And if you access it only till that point where you have unique elements, in a way, you are accessing only the unique elements. So what did this help us do? It avoided the temporary array. It avoided space, extra space, space complexity reduced. So this is how one can remove duplicates from a sorted array. Or another way to look at it is to access only the unique elements within an array also. This logic can be made use of. Any confusion till this point of time? Beautiful. Now, will this work? And how will the code look like? Let me show you. Let's write some code. If you notice, I have created a function called as remove duplicates. This is my array. I'm passing the array there. Okay. So now let's quickly write the logic. So there is very simple. I will first initialize i to or i is not required. We can first initialize uh, rd. So int rd equal to zero. Okay, next I'll come inside and I'll run a loop where i begins from first element and goes till the length of the array. Okay, so i less than ar dot length i plus plus and then I'll come inside that and check if in case ar of rd is not equal to ar of i. Then I will come inside and then I will to AR of RD assign AR of I. First, I will increment RD by telling RD plus plus, and then in AR of RD, I will assign AR of I. RD AR of I. Okay, great. Fine. Now, now this would have removed duplicates for sure, but I want you to understand something. I'll come down. What I will do is see, I'm calling remove duplicates. Once I will print this array before uh, removing duplicates and after. So I'll just run a loop quickly. 
and inside that I'll just tell sys out uh, system dot out dot print itself you can tell AR of I okay great plus one space yeah now I'll just uh, leave one one sys out statement I'll just put there so that you know comes to the next line cursor and then again I will just uh, copy that loop paste it again so I'm printing before and after so if in case I go and now I execute then one can clearly notice 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 6, 6 is the original array. 2, 3, 4, 6. Yes, in the beginning till this point, duplicates have been removed. But after that also is getting printed. So in someone's eyes, have you removed duplicates? No. So what should you do? After removing duplicates, when you print, you must print till this point only where there are unique elements. But the question is, how will you know what that point is? How are you able to think? So that is, that is what remove duplicate should return to you. It should return to you the index position till where you have to print. So that it gives you an illusion that only and only duplicates, I mean unique elements you are accessing and duplicates have been removed. So how will you do that? Simple, I will go on top. What I will do is, first I will return, return type from void, I will make it as int. Why am I making it as int? Because look at this, once I come outside, would you agree that once this loop executes, rd will be at that index where till where you have unique elements. So don't you think it is rd that you should return? So what I will do is I will return rd plus 1 I will do. Why plus 1? Because I want to return the size of the array in which there are only unique elements. Now you know totally how many unique elements are there? 2, 3, 4, 6, 4. So rd will be at index 3. But I am returning 4 telling that the size of the array with only unique elements is 4. Now how will this help me? Come down. Now remove duplicates will return a value for me. rd. So I will just collect it in a variable called as rd itself. Okay. Now see what I will do is rd is 4. I want to go till 3. So what I will do is, in the second array, I will say, I will go from 0 till less than rd. Less than rd means if rd is 4, I will go till 0 to 3, which is the right index. Have you able to think? Now if in case I execute, one can clearly notice, you got 2, 3, 4, 6. You print it till 1 less than rd. rd was 4, you print it till 3. Any confusion till here? Beautiful, isn't it? So without using any extra space, successfully you have been able to delete duplicates. I hope you enjoyed this particular operation that we performed on the array. Now let's go and explore many more such operations.